Guys, you see what I'm doing here? This is a very common drill. I've seen this done over the last 30 years of coaching tennis where coaches want you to imagine hitting through the ball. And they will do this drill where you're hitting across the other side of the net and basically they want you to extend the arm and hit through the ball as much as possible. But I'm not gonna single this drill out because there are many other ones such as hitting two to three balls that are teaching players to hit through the ball. And this is one of the worst things that you can do because that is not what is supposed to happen on the forehand stroke. I already made several videos where I talked about the fact that the tennis stroke is not a linear stroke, it's a circular stroke. So hitting through these three imaginary balls, this is one of the most old school drills that there is. People have been teaching this for 50 years or more. This makes no sense in the context of what happens to the forehand. And usually if you watch very carefully when coaches demonstrate these drills, they're usually sideways, okay? So imagine me hitting in this way. They're performing these drills side on, okay? And that is the problem. This is not what happens on the forehand. If indeed I was sideways on my forehand, then it would make perfect sense to hit through three balls or to swing across the net and extend the arm. Makes perfect sense. But guess what? That's not how you strike a forehand. Not only in modern tennis, but in classic tennis as well. One of the pioneers of the circular swing path, Oscar Wagner, was teaching the circular across the body swing path for many, many years. I think it's more than 40 years ago that he was teaching this. Why? Because even classic tennis had forehands that were circular and not linear. What does it mean to have a circular forehand? Well, it is a forehand that's gonna involve torso rotation. So when you're imagining hitting through three balls, when you're standing across the net and swinging your arm, this works fine when you're sideways, but as soon as you start rotating your torso, these drills make very little sense. Now, one of the differences between a classic forehand and a modern forehand is where contact was made. It has to do with the loop. I talk about this in my kinetic chain video. With the loop, players initiate the torso rotation sooner and they end up making contact much further out front. And how do I judge a proper contact on the forehand? I don't look at the arm structure. That's what a lot of people are confused with. They think that when you have the arm completely extended, that that's the perfect way to make contact. I'm gonna get into arm structures a little bit later in this video, but it's completely irrelevant whether you are striking your forehand like Iga, very close to the body, or like Federer, further away from the body. What's important and something that all high-level players have in common, whether you're talking about your high-level junior, your college player, or the players that you watch on TV, on the vast majority of their forehands, the contact is going to take place with the dominant shoulder in front of the non-dominant shoulder. Now, picture hitting through three balls when this is taking place on the forehand. It doesn't make sense anymore. Why? Because now I don't have space to hit forward. If I was sideways on the forehand making contact, now I could easily hit through three balls or more and extend my arm and so on. If I'm standing across the net and swinging the racket, this works perfectly fine when I'm sideways, but in the context of where contact takes place in the history of how the forehand was struck in the tennis world, it's always with that dominant shoulder in front. I will say that the classic forehand was a little bit further behind, but still the shoulders were aligned with each other. Does this mean that players always make contact here? No, there will be circumstances where indeed players have this side of the body, the dominant side, a little bit behind. And in those cases, it is true that they are hitting through the ball a little bit, what I call steering. So it is not the case that 100% of the time players have a circular swim path. They will indeed sometimes be linear. But I conducted a tremendous amount of research on the forehand. I can tell you that on 95% of forehands, contact is established with the dominant shoulder in front, and now it doesn't make a lot of sense to hit through three balls and continue going forward. Naturally, that racket is gonna go across the body. Why? Because when it goes across the body, the racket and the ball is connected to the core of the body. This is what you have to understand. When I make contact here, if I continue to go forward, I disengage the contact from my core by pulling that racket across the body this way, I am connecting the contact to the core, and it's exactly what happens to the forehand in 95% of the scenarios. Okay, now let's talk about something that people are confused with. 
and this is the fact that they want to have extension. The vast majority of high-level players plays the forehand with a bent arm. And here's the interesting thing about the bent arm forehand. It'll never go from a bent arm into a straight arm. You're not going to see this. This doesn't make sense. Because again, the context is the contact. So when players are making contact with the dominant shoulder in front and they indeed have a bent arm, they're not going to continue going this way with the arm and straighten it. You're not going to see this from any high-level player. Naturally, the arm is going to remain bent and it's going to be pulled towards the core of the body. Now, other players such as Nadal, Federer will extend the arm upon the racket drop and they will remain straight through the entirety of the swing and they will make contact a lot further away from the body. This is a stylistic element of the forehand. If you happen to hit your forehand with a straight arm, by all means continue doing so. If you happen to hit your forehand with a bent arm, by all means continue doing so. Yes, the elbow needs to be in a proper position. It's not okay to make contact when the elbow is tucked behind the body. You want to have the elbow in front of your rib cage. There's no doubt about that. But even if it's very close to your rib cage, this is still okay. Don't be alarmed with this. But what you shouldn't do under no circumstances, try to extend your arm if you happen to have a bent arm forehand. What will happen is that not only will you be obsessed with making a conscious movement in a fast portion of the stroke and you will be forced to slow down the stroke in that part and abruptly shorten it in order to extend your arm but you have to understand that this will give you absolutely nothing because again if you happen to make contact with a bent arm and you continue to extend you're going to be disengaging the contact from the core of the body and you're going to have less control and less power now i want you to realize one thing and that is that when you make contact with the ball, that ball will not stay on your racket at all. The contact on any stroke in tennis, but especially the forehand, is over a millisecond. So if you think that you can carry the ball and go through three balls and at the same time achieve top spin, you are delusional. You have to understand that if you go forward on the ball, the ball is not gonna stick on your racket and stay there. It's gonna be shot off the racket in milliseconds. So what you do initially at the moment of contact matters. So the only way to get top spin is if you go vertically over the ball right at the moment of contact, the racket needs to go up. If indeed it goes forward, you will not be getting a lot of top spin. I know that people are of the belief that you can go forward through the ball and then upwards later and this is how you create topspin. This is a completely delusional thing because you have to understand that the contact is over in milliseconds. It is at that exact moment where the type of shot that you're hitting is going to be determined. Whether you're going to be hitting your forehand more flat or with more topspin. Now, I want to stress one thing and that is the vertical swing path on the forehand it is not completely vertical if the racket does not go straight up like this it does go forward a little bit you can see the topspin pro which is something that's very useful if you want to practice your topspin forehand you can get one of these i have a link in the description but you can see that the topspin pro is slightly tilted and that's exactly what happens so players are not going vertically like they're hitting over a wall this would be a contact that's too thin and it will turn into a topspin lop for example so the way I describe the swing path on the forehand is more of a diagonal vertical line where you are going up, but you're going forward and up at the same time. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, are you saying that this is a linear swing path? Are we going forward and up? No, we're striking the ball at a little bit of a different angle. So instead of going up on the ball like this, we're going more in a diagonal plane, okay? So we are applying a different type of topspin to the ball one that's more penetrating and it's not as thin as if you would go completely vertically on the ball like this now the great thing about the intuitive tennis youtube channel is that i present a lot of my case studies in other words i show you my lessons and you can go back to all my lessons and you can try to find a moment in those lessons when I was teaching the forehand where 
I instructed the player to do a circular swim path or a linear swim path. I never mentioned those words because here is the fact about the circular swim path. It will happen completely by itself. There's absolutely no need to instruct the players to have a circular swing path. What I do, however, teach is torso rotation because this is the most common error at the recreational level. I do a tremendous amount of video analysis with recreational players and what I see most commonly is when players make contact too far back. So in other words, they make contact with the dominant shoulder behind the non-dominant shoulder. Now, even if they want to achieve top spin, the body's blocking the racket for going across the body and they end up steering the ball, pushing it forward and they have a hard time getting power and control. So the key to the circular swim path is not that you consciously start swinging the racket around the body like this. No, this is something that you don't need to concern yourself with. You don't even need to worry about the racket going forward or across the ball. Like I said, there's going to be circumstances where indeed you are going to go on the ball forward a little bit, depending on where you make contact and what your intention of the shot is. But what you have to understand is that if you have a torso rotation that's not sequenced correctly and you are making contact too far behind, and I'm not talking about the arm structure, I'm talking about the relationship of your shoulders, this is something that you have to fix. How are you gonna fix it? You're gonna have to sequence your rotation so that when that racket drops and you get to the bottom portion of the racket drop, this is where you have to start opening up so that when that racket starts going forward, your chest is going to be going towards the ball and as you continue rotating and dragging that racket into the contact naturally you're going to be making contact with the dominant shoulder ahead of the non-dominant shoulder independent of your arm structure and this is the exact contact that you need to develop what will happen naturally on the vast majority of your forehands is that it's going to result in a circular swing path because that's intuitively the most powerful way to strike a forehand. If it wasn't, then you wouldn't see every single high-level player execute a circular swing path in 95% of the cases. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, how about your forehand? You've got a weird looking forehand. It doesn't look like a modern forehand. It looks like a WTA forehand or a forehand from the 90s. I made a whole video on my forehand, several videos actually. I'm not gonna get into detail on my forehand. If you think my forehand looks bad, hey, that's fine, I don't care. But I wanna tell you one thing about my forehand and there's some players on the professional tour that do hit it in a similar way and that is the flat topspin forehand. That's what I hit. So the interesting thing about the flat topspin forehand is that despite the fact that the ball is struck with a lot less topspin, it is still a circular swing path. So if you take a look at my forehand and what happens shortly after contact is that the racket goes across the body because I make proper contact. I have correct fundamentals on my forehand despite the way my forehand looks. Okay, this is one thing that you have to understand. So I make contact with the dominant shoulder in front of the non-dominant shoulder on 95% of my forehands, but my racket does not go up like this like it does on Djokovic or any other elite level player on the ATP Tour, my racket comes forward a little bit more this way. So you have to understand that the tip of the racket is going forward through the ball and it's going vertically across while my hand is going across the body. So the mechanism of this movement is the circular swing path. However, the racket face goes more through the ball than it would on a heavy topspin forehand that you see primarily on the ATP Tour. And guys, I made a video, the intuitive circular swing path a long time ago where I have proven that the circular swing path is an intuitive swing. I'm going to tell it one more time because I find this experiment to be quite fascinating. And I'm going to say it again because the last two times I said it, it didn't have much of an impact. So I'm going to try again. So here's the deal. Imagine a player winning a match or imagine a player being angry and hitting a ball out of the stance. This is an intuitive shot. Why is it an intuitive shot? Because nobody practices hitting the ball over the fence. It has no purpose, okay? So players are naturally, intuitively hitting the ball over the fence. And when you slow-mo a shot like that, 
players are not sideways hitting like this. No, players are executing a circular swing where the power is drawn for the body's torso rotation. And it's got nothing to do with topspin. It's got nothing to do with controlling the ball. The only purpose is power and getting the ball as far away from the tennis court as possible. And naturally, players will pull the racket towards the core of their body to get the maximum amount of power. And what that is, is a circular swing path.